you want an amazing 65-inch TV for under $1,500, but you can't decide which mini LED TV, the 2024 TCL QM8 or the Hisense U8N or last year's 2023 QM8, which won my 2023 award for HDR impact. Are the newer 2024 TVs that much better than 2023? We'll answer that today by comparing their image quality side by side. And yes, I'll share with you my best TV settings so you too can enjoy what I see. We will also compare them to similarly priced TVs from Sony and Samsung, so you don't have a fear of missing out on the other mainstream brands. But forget similarly priced. How do these Chinese budget brands compare to the flagship Q900D 8K TV from Samsung that cost almost $5,000? So sit down, grab your popcorn, and let's find out. Today's video is brought to you by WhoKeys. Trying to build a PC on a budget, but don't know where to buy your Windows software cheaply? WhoKeys to the rescue. Use my coupon code SF20 and immediate discount with a free upgrade to Windows 11. At the bottom of this order where it says code card, to the right is the product key you need to activate Windows. So copy this long number, then go to the Windows menu and click on settings. In the settings menu at the bottom, select update and security select activation, then select change product key, paste what you copied from who keys, click next, click activate, and you're done. You can buy Windows 11 Pro or Office 2019 Pro with my discount code SF20. Yes, I've been using WhoKeys for the last several years on my own PC builds and it just works. So if you remember, last year the TCL QM8 won my most impactful HDR TV among all LCD TVs and even challenged the best OLED TVs for HDR impact, but of course it was not perfect. I docked points first because shadow detail wasn't the best, there was some black crushing, and color accuracy was definitely challenged. Nevertheless, it was one of the best HDR TVs you can get regardless of price. And the good news for those of you who still have the 2023 TCL QM8 is that recent firmware version 295 definitely addressed some of those drawbacks, specifically the shadow detail black crushing issue. The question then is, how does it compare to this year's 2024 TCL QM8, which is definitely all new in terms of more dimming zones and better processing? Is the 2023 TCL QM8 still relevant in 2024? Let's find out. We'll have them side by side with each other. So remember, all three of these TVs are still excellent TVs. Now, when you take price into consideration, there is no better TV for HDR impact than these three options for under $1,400. Speaking of price, let's talk about where these TVs land against their competitors, similarly priced TVs. Now, before we jump into that price comparison, keep in mind that these are all 65 inch sizes because first, it's the most popular size, and second, the QMA doesn't come in anything smaller than 65. If you need 55 inches, go with the Hisense U8N because it does come in 55 and its performance is phenomenal. Regardless, in this review, they're all 65 inches, so I'm going to talk about pricing with regards to that size. So jumping into that, beginning with the least expensive in this group, the 2023 QM8 is $9.99 currently. That is an amazing price. Given for $1,000, it's hard to beat. And then right up there is the new Hisense U8N for 2024, that's $10.99, recently got its own price cut. Likely it'll end up closer to $9.99 by Black Friday. And then you have the 2024 QM8 51G, that is currently $14.99, but I expect it to be closer to $1,300 around Prime Day. And then by Black Friday, closer to $1,200. And of course, this time next year, probably around $1,000 as well. So depending on how long you wait, that may be the one to get next year, right? But let's look at what is out there for around that price. Now, a direct competitor in this price point is the Sony X90L. Rock solid, $10.99 for the 65-inch size. But why isn't it here competing against the other three? Well, for HDR impact, it's not quite there. It's not quite as bright in the specular highlights, right? However, that's not its priority. If you value skin tones, image processing, right? That XR clear magic you hear about, maybe cinema motion, that natural less soap opera effect, right? Out of the box, color accuracy is closer to accurate. Then the Sony X90L is for you. Call it a day, don't look at the other TVs because the other TVs are for HDR impact, maximizing that pop, that wow factor. The X90L is just an excellent all around TV, but it doesn't have that HDR wow factor. It comes close, but not quite wow. 
Now, if you want that Sony magic with HDR impact, we're talking skin tones, HDR pop, brightness, motion, all of that in one package, you're gonna have to pay up for the Bravia 9 at $3,300. But that is a whole other stratosphere of performance. And we'll review that and compare it to the QM8 later this summer. But right now, you know what your budget is and it's not $3,300. Now, moving on to other competitors. What about OLED? They're a bit more expensive, so look at what we have as far as OLEDs are concerned. You have the Sony A75L, the LG C3, and the S90C, right? Right there at around $1,500. So three to $400 more than what you will pay for mini OED. Their shadow detail, black levels, awesome. The problem is the HDR impact is not there. So we're back to this question of HDR impact Great TVs, all of them. And I would definitely recommend it if you're just watching TV shows, news, sports, and you don't need that bright impact. These TVs are definitely excellent. But if you want to get to that next level, 2000 nit, boom, pop, right? These OLED TVs simply do not offer enough pop in a bright room. In a dark room, they come close. But in a bright room, you're going to have to upgrade to the LG G4 or the Samsung S95D or even the Sony A95L. These three TVs are the only OLEDs I would recommend for HDR impact in a bright room, which is why I will also have the G4 and the S95D to see, wow, what are you missing if you're not going OLED in a bright room? Because ultimately you're curious, okay, if I didn't buy the best OLED, what am I missing? And we'll tell you what that is. But now let's get into the TV comparisons themselves, beginning with the settings. Now remember, these settings are very specific. We're talking about in a bright room for best HDR impact without losing some of that color accuracy, right? So these settings are not dark room creator's intent. When you hear creator's intent, you have to think a pitch black room. Why? Because the creator is grading his movie in a special monitor in a dark room. You're not in a dark room, you're in a bright room. If you're in a dark room, that's a different set of settings. So for the purposes of this video, I'm recommending these TVs based on what I believe is the most popular use case, which is watching HDR movies, HDR content in a bright room. What's a bright room? Well, let's define it this way. Filmmaker mode at its most accurate in a bright room simply is too dark. The shadow detail feels like it's crushed, right? It's like, wow, that's really dark. That means the setting is too dark for your room. So rather than measure the lumens in your room, right? Wait, how bright is this room? How many looks is this? I'm just gonna say, try filmmaker mode in its most accurate mode. If it's too dark, your room is too bright. So in that situation, these are the settings we're gonna use, beginning with what I consider our benchmark settings from the OLED TVs, because I believe the LG G4 has the best bright room setting right now, which is cinema home with dynamic tone mapping on, an expression enhancer set to brightness. This works very well for even the brightest rooms. That's my benchmark. And why is that? Because in this setting, even the dark scenes preserve some of that shadow accuracy, but the bright scenes, boom, it nails it. This is my recommendation if cost is no object. Now the S95D comes oh so close. What holds it back is its anti-glare coating because in a bright room, that coating diminishes the contrast just a touch. That's why I'd recommend the G4 before the S95D in a bright room. And speaking of the S95D, its settings is quite simple. I put it into movie mode and set tone mapping to active and shadow detail to minus two, because I feel that maybe it's a bit lifted relative to the G4. Play with these settings because what I see is not what you see. We all see things differently. And next up is the benchmark LCD mini LED TV, the Samsung QN900D 8K TV. Its settings is filmmaker mode, with tone mapping on active, contrast enhancer is either low or off, depending on your content. I set it to low, sometimes I set it to off. At off, you get a little bit more shadow detail. At low, the black levels are slightly better. Really depends on your taste. None of them is wrong. You use what you like. I'm gonna keep it at off in some scenes or low in others. Moving on to the settings for the first budget brand, the 2024 TCL QM8 in movie mode. Yes, IMAX is slightly brighter, but it locks you out of the settings, which I don't like. The movie settings are brightness 100, contrast 90, black level 50, dynamic contrast is off. Now dynamic tone mapping is special for 2024. I can choose between detail priority or brightness priority or balance. I found detail priority to be phenomenal. And this is very similar to the G4. Bravo TCL for doing this. 
and local contrast is on high, micro contrast is on off, and gamma is 2.4. Next up is the Hisense U8N. IMAX is clearly brighter and you have access to settings, but there are issues with tone mapping as you'll see. Local dimming and peak brightness set to high, brightness is always 100, contrast 90, black level at minus 1, dark detail is off, active contrast is on medium, and dynamic tone mapping is on and lastly is last year's 2023 TCL QM8. IMAX is also brighter, but I definitely lose too much contrast. Colors feels washed out. I prefer movie mode with some control over the settings as follows. Brightness 100, contrast 90, black level is 53, dynamic contrast is off, black stretch is off, dynamic tone mapping is on, but there's no option for detail priority or brightness priority like the 2024 model. Local contrast is high, micro contrast off. So after all of that, how's the HDR image quality? So we're going to break it down into five parts. Starting with the biggie, HDR impact, overall brightness in a bright room. I found that the 2024 QM8 51G is consistently the brightest while preserving contrast. It most closely matches the very best OLED TVs, the G4 and the S95D, while being a little brighter than either. The 2024 Hisense U8N comes close and a step behind in contrast compared to the 2024 QM8. The 2023 TCL QM8 is not as bright as U8N, but the contrast is slightly better. The Samsung Q900D was the last in terms of brightness. Now, for most people, it's definitely bright enough, but we're talking absolute brightness. 900D falls behind there, but its contrast is slightly better than the U8N, although not quite as good as either QM8s. Now, HDR tone mapping. This is very subtle. In the brightest scenes with details and specular highlights, who does it best? Well, this scene from Pan really tells you the story you need to hear. The 2023 Q900D nails it, coming closest to the OLED TVs. The 2024 QM851G is just barely behind in terms of tone mapping, but its additional brightness definitely makes up the difference. I prefer the way TCL did it. The 2023 QM8 is next right behind its 2024 successor, and UITN's tone mapping comes last year it's still struggling with tone mapping. Now, if you notice, in IMAX, the tone mapping is definitely worse. This is why I don't like IMAX. In IMAX mode, tone mapping is terrible, right? With dynamic tone mapping off, you get maximum brightness, but you lose a lot of detail. It's clipped. Whereas in filmmaker mode, the U8N with dynamic tone mapping on looks best consistently across all content, with the only trade-off being it's slightly less bright than IMAX, and I will take that all day long. Next up is shadow detail. The 2023 Q900D does it best. So in a dark room, in more critical movie watching situations where it's slightly dim, the 900D sets the benchmark here, most closely matching the OLED TVs, G4 and S95D. Next up is the 2024 QM8, then the 2024 U8N, and last is the QM8 2023. And so this is where the successor 2024 QM8 really shines. Bright scenes, it's amazing. We expected that, right? But then in dark scenes, it really does come across great shadow detail. I mean, as I study this and get the settings right, the settings that I shared with you, wow. It is better than the QM8 from 2023 after its firmware update. So imagine, wow, if this has more firmware updates for 2024 into 2025, this could be an amazing TV next year. It definitely has the tools for it. So Bravo QM8 2024, the 851G. Bravo for addressing the weaknesses of last year in such a direct and improved manner. Now we get to the weakness of all LCD mini LED TVs. This is the compromise, specular highlights. If you want deep blacks, great black bars, right? Ah, the trade-off is you have to dim down some of the specular highlights. This is why people get OLED. You get the deep blacks and you get the bright OLED specular highlights. We're talking about the tiny little things. And I found a great scene in Dune 2, right before the arena in this dark shadowy scene. Look at her eyes, right? We're talking about the reflection off her eyes. It's super bright on the OLED. Look at the 900D, perfect black bars, but look how dim her eyes are now. However, look at the 2024 QM8, preserving black levels and shadow detail while having that brightness match the OLED TVs. I have never seen this before. This is the first time side by side I've seen a mini LED LCD TV control its black levels. Now its black levels aren't as deep as the OLEDs, but definitely comes very close to the 900D. But look at the 
bright specular highlights. This is amazing. Normally, if you want that bright specular highlight, you have to lift the block levels a little bit like a U8N. Is it because of those extra dimming zones? Software processing? I don't know. But this is why I think the 2024 TCL QM851G is a true challenger to the Bravia 9. This is what I expect of the Bravia 9. Great black levels and specular highlights popping. Look next to an OLED TV. That's a $3,300 OLED. It's right there. Now, speaking of skin tones and accuracy of skin tone, who is the best in the business out of the box for that? The Sony A95L, of course. So we have it right here. We're going to compare all these TVs to the Sony. Now, the Sony to me represents that natural, very compelling, engaging skin tone that most people like. How close do these TVs come to that Sony? As a reminder, remember these TVs are not set to the most accurate mode per se. They're set to a bright room condition to fight the ambient light. But given that, which TV comes closest or is the most pleasant? In my opinion, very preference-based, of course, but I'm comparing it to the A95L. Beginning with what I think is the closest to the Sony, that would be the S95D by Samsung. The G4 is right there. Now again, reminder, Cinema Home, I know it's not the most accurate, and on the Samsung, it's in active mode, but regardless, I just wanted to compare this to the Sony. I found the S95D to be closer to the Sony, I am sure with calibration, the G4 will be right there, but out of the box, this is what it is. And next is the Hisense U8N coming very close. The 900D is right there, but I feel the 8N might be a bit closer than the 900D. And then the 2024 QM8, and then last is the 2023 QM8 because of that contrasty skin cone. If I take local contrast off, it would be very close. But even then, with local contrast off, I prefer the QM8's skin tone shadow detail better, or the 2024 QM8's skin tone shadow detail better than the 2023. That's how far QM8 has come. With all of that said, I think you know who the winner here is. Now, let's just throw price out the window, right? Let's say price is no object. I am so impressed by the TCL QM851G for 2024. It beats the 900D head-to-head -head in all the HDR impact qualities, and most importantly, the most difficult category of all, specular highlights while maintaining black bars. Unbelievable how close it came to OLED, right? OLED beats it, absolute contrast, and the deepest black levels, because that's what OLEDs do, but the QM8 did it so well, and the 900D, its black levels were right there with OLED, but was the trade-off in order to do that it had to pull down specular highlights. The QM8 for 2024 did not do that. The UAN did what it had to do, right? Lifted that black level a little to give you the specular highlights that almost match the QM8. So if I were to rank them, the 2024 QM8 on top, the best of the three TVs we're comparing. Next up, Hisense U8N. Although you're going to notice the black bars are slightly lifted, but the colors are slightly more accurate, I think, out of the box. And the QM8 for 2023, still a contender. That's why it's $999. If price is a concern, you cannot go over $1,000. Get the QM8 for 2023. Unless the Hisense U8N drops in price and is below $1,000, then you might have to consider. Now, the U8N is an easy call if it's a 55-inch TV you want. It's the only one that comes in a 55 of these three TVs. Lastly, the Q900D. It makes this case when you don't need it super bright. In other words, HDR impact, not a big deal. You just want a bright TV with the best processing of the group. The 900D has it. Best in class sports motion, which we didn't compare here because that's a whole other video. But the 900D has its strengths that the other TVs cannot match, which is consistent black bars, all seams, all content. It's black bars, always the best. Easy settings, right? Which means you don't have to go in and change settings per scene like I had to do with the QM8 for 2023. For 2024, the QM8 is very similar to 900D in that respect. And lastly, its motion processing, its image processing, its scaling is going to be of the world, which again, we didn't test. The sources I use is either Kaleidoscape or Blu-ray Disc, both awesome sources to let these TVs run amok. The 900D though, with more questionable sources, YouTube TV, bad internet connection, will definitely rise above, but again, it's over $3,000, so I would hope so. Now, to be fair to Hisense, the U8N is not their best TV this year. It's the U9N, 
but it only comes in a 75 and 85 inch. I know you're asking, well, what about the UX? Well, 100 inches, 110 inches? Okay, if you're shopping in that size, wait for the UX. This is such a great year for TV reviews, flagship TV reviews, especially because I'm gonna compare all four of these amazing TVs side by side next to the HX3110. 4,000 monitor is here. Well, not quite. I had to drive it to get it calibrated in a Hollywood studio somewhere, but regardless, I cannot wait to see who comes closest to Sony's 4,000 nit reference monitor. Hang out, check the reviews here, here, and here, and until next time, my friends, stop the FOMO.